multiplexing. It sounds like a bad Marvel movie, but if you're not careful, you can get in trouble with Microsoft. And I'm gonna give an example later of a company where that happened, but don't worry. We're gonna go into what multiplexing is, what multiplexing isn't, so your company is never in trouble. Here are two quick examples. If I have records in Dataverse, and once they're created, it sends an approval email to all of these people who do not have premium licensing, is that multiplexing? No, it's not. These heartthrobs don't need premium licensing, and the documentation clearly says that for emails or approvals, it's not required. But what if every night we have an automatic process that takes these records from Dataverse and puts them in a shared location, like SharePoint or a CSV? We just migrated all of the data, and none of these people have premium licensing. Is it multiplexing that these dreamboats are consuming the data even though they're not paying for it? This is a gray area that we're going to explore where some of the documentation says it's okay, but in other circumstances it's not. After talking to others and going through all the documentation, my main takeaway is that if a user is triggering an event and gets value from the system, they need the appropriate license. For instance, if a bunch of people without premium licensing are creating records in SharePoint and there is a flow that migrates those records into SQL and that flow is obviously running under a premium license, these users don't need a premium license because they're not getting any value from the system. However, if those SQL records end up sending emails to these other users, these other users don't need premium licensing because they're not triggering the event. However, if some of the kings we saw earlier are also the recipients of that email, technically they trigger the event and are getting value from it, so they do need a license. If you open the multiplexing PDF, you will see that it can get a little contradictory to what's on the website. But that's because the PDF is mostly talking about Dynamics 365, where Microsoft is very strict about their intellectual property. For instance, if I own a bunch of restaurants and all of the managers are entering data about the restaurants in a custom application we built that has nothing to do with Dynamics. But every Every night, we take the data from these restaurants and we migrate them into our Dynamics 365 instance. According to the documentation we saw earlier with SharePoint, this should not be a multiplexing issue. But according to the multiplexing guide for Dynamics, these studs do need a Dynamics 365 license. Even though they're not using Dynamics 365, may not even know it exists, but because the data they create indirectly ends up in Dynamics 365, that's why. And now the big question, does Microsoft actually enforce all of this stuff? Yes, they do. Kevin Zollinger from the Utah User Group had some MVPs at his session who specifically gave examples of where some of the companies they knew got audited by Microsoft. They were not following the multiplexing rules and had to pay extra cash because of it. His advice is, if you're in the gray area, it's more of a question about risk tolerance for your company. If you're not risk tolerant at all and don't want any issues, then a good rule of thumb is anyone who benefits from a premium feature should have a premium license. And a big thank you to Jan Sunil, Buell and Josh, Nathan, Magda, John, and Michael for helping with this ridiculous thumbnail. And our final point is about sharing tables in Dynamics 365. If you have a bunch of users who are using Dynamics 365 and you have a few other users who only need some of the Dynamics tables, like maybe just Opportunity and Lead, do these people need Dynamics 365 licenses for just a few tables? No, they don't. Here is a Dynamics 365 sales app. And if I wanna make a brand new model-driven app, I can totally use Lead, Opportunities, Accounts, Contacts, but I have to be careful. I can't just come in here, select the account table, add the views and forms and call it a day. I have to be very careful if I'm adding an account form that I'm not using any intellectual property. There are certain things I can take from the form, certain things I can't. I have to customize the ribbon up here and I have to make my own security rule. If you wanna know the details of that, Steve Mordu has a great video about it where he covers the specific steps on how to do this. In fact, one of the products this company sells uses a light version of Dynamics 365 sales and they go into the documentation 
on their website on how this is compliant. Thank you for watching. If you have your own multiplexing stories, please share them below. And if you have any questions about this, please leave them. We may even do a part two of this video.